Encounters don't always have to look like these pretty moments. <laughs> Actually having an encounter with God could be the very thing you don't want to walk through because the Lord is trying to draw you unto himself. What does it actually mean to have an encounter with Jesus? So I just pulled this definition from Merriam Webster's dictionary, okay? So this is not some spiritual Bible dictionary or anything. This is just what an encounter means in the English translation. Um, but it is to come upon face to face. And I did not know that that was in the dictionary before they named this series. So to come upon face to face, to come upon or experience, especially unexpectedly, an unexpected or casual meeting with someone or something. So I love this first part of the definition where truly an encounter with the Lord can be unexpected. It can be crazy and just this wild encounter with the Lord, but it also can be this casual meeting with someone. I mean, to encounter someone, to encounter a friend of yours, it doesn't have to be this. I mean, me and my friends, uh, we can be total couch potatoes. We can sit on the couch and just veg and not say a word to one of each other. To, you know, to one another and we're having an encounter with one another. We, but that's because we enjoy time together. We don't have to put on this facade to be together. But here's the part of the definition that truly, if I'm being um, completely honest, I almost left off because I was like, I don't know if this is gonna prove my point. Um, so I'm gonna not say that. But then the more I started reading through scripture about what an encounter with the Lord meant, I was like, oh my gosh, to have an encounter, this is literally the definition of an encounter. So Miriam Webster's goes on to say that it is unexpectedly experience or be faced with something difficult or hostile to engage in conflict with. Okay, so this might be the part of the encounter that we don't like. I didn't like it because when I was when I read the word hostile, I was like, okay, so to have an encounter with God, does that look hostile? I don't know, but you know, so one of the, then I started reading through scripture about all these encounters and trust me, I'm going to name some of here in a second. And I didn't even touch the surface of the encounters that happen in the Bible with the Lord. But one of them that really piqued my interest was the story of Jacob. So Jacob had an out encounter with God. Um, and I'm going to read it to you in Genesis 32. It says that, that Jacob was left alone. Okay, so in my Bible, I underlined that because I thought that was super significant, that he was alone. And a lot of us don't like being alone, or maybe we look at loneliness as some like crazy sin or something like, oh, it's not good to be alone. And you know, in most aspects, I would agree with you. But in this moment, because he was alone, he had an encounter with the Lord that he may not have had if there were a bunch of people around him. And so through his loneliness, it says that a man wrestled with him until daybreak. You know, we don't like the hard moments of life and all of us have probably experienced some kind of loneliness, but I'm telling you it's in those moments that I think I have encounters with the Lord the most. That he's like, I'm gonna meet you right where you're at. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all together. I'm gonna meet you right here. So Jacob wrestled with the Lord until daybreak. And then verse 30, this is how we know it was Jesus because it just says a man he wrestled with. But in verse 30, it says, so Jacob named the place Peniel for he said, I have seen God face to face yet my life has been preserved. So that word pineal, it was so pivotal to him that he named it pineal, which means facing God. So he had this encounter with the Lord, but he wrestled with the Lord. Okay, so how many of us get this idea of an encounter with the Lord that, oh, it's like this tingly feeling or like, you know, we get goosebumps and we're like, oh, I mean, I love the fuzzies. Those are good feelings. Yeah, the fuzzies are great when you're just in worship and your eyes, are, you're just a mess and yeah. it's like the fuzzy. And you I get like, like it. Little I don't know what it is. Bumps. Yeah. yeah, so we've all, you know, had some of those moments. You know, we also get this image of an encounter with God, you know, those moments where we're healed. Like suddenly something that's broken in our body gets healed. And I'm sure someone in this room has encountered the Lord through a miraculous healing. Those are incredible moments. Maybe you had this moment where you're just overwhelmed and just didn't even have words because you were in the presence of God. These are all beautiful moments with the Lord, all encounters with the Lord. But I want to, you know, maybe show you a different narrative of what a, an encounter with the Lord can also be. Um, so in scripture, obviously I just named Jacob wrestling. So he wrestled with the Lord. We don't normally look at that as a great encounter. Like I don't want to wrestle through my feelings, wrestle through the hardships. But in those moments, sometimes we encounter the Lord more than we've ever encountered him before, going through those hard moments. Um, what about Paul? So Paul was struck blind. You know, I don't know if you, about you, but if you were in this room and you were struck blind all of a sudden, you probably wouldn't, your first thought may not be, oh, great, an encounter with God. You actually might think- Cast out the demons. I know, exactly. Like Cast Satan is attacking me yeah, right now. The attack. enemy is after me. And we think, you know, that, that that can't possibly be an encounter with God, but Saul was struck blind. Yeah. 
And that was a miraculous encounter with the Lord. And then we have other moments like Mary, okay? God bless her. Mary got pregnant and for the rest of her life had this stigma on her life that, oh, she probably slept with a man before she was married. But in reality, it was an encounter with God. She had to walk through life as an an outcast and yet she gave birth to the Savior through a virgin birth. But imagine thinking to yourself like, oh, this must be some miraculous encounter with the Lord. Obviously the birth of Jesus was, but the stigma she had to walk around with, that's not fun. We don't look at that as this crazy encounter with the Lord. Um, so what about, what about the rich young ruler? The rich young ruler you know, came to Jesus and he said, what do I have to do to follow you? So he's literally face to face with Jesus. This is a perfect physical example of this. And Jesus said, leave everything behind. You know, what about, what if Jesus comes to you or maybe everything gets taken away from you and that, and in those moments you think, oh, this can't be an encounter with God. The enemy's attacking my family. He's taking everything away from you. But what if the Lord is taking things away from you and asking you to trust him? And where, what, what's so sad about the rich young ruler is he chose not to walk away from those things. So he actually walked away from maybe a deeper encounter with the Lord because he chose not to forsake something that the Lord was calling him to forsake. Um, you know, some of my favorite ones are David. He was surrounded by enemies. He writes in Psalms that, you know, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know, being in front of your enemies are people that don't like you, don't agree with you, doesn't seem like an encounter with God. And yet in those moments, Jesus was just sitting with him. The Holy Spirit was with him in those moments surrounded by enemies. We see Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego all faced with death, staring death in the face, you know, getting thrown into a furnace and experiencing this moment where it's like, okay, I could die. You know, I don't know about you, but it may not seem like a great encounter with the Lord. And then the Lord came through in the face of death. Um, And then the last one that, you know, that is so significant to me. And again, you can go read in scripture and go on and on and on, but being thrown in jail, you know, Joseph was thrown into jail and eventually was elevated to basically rule over the whole country of Egypt. And then you have Paul and Silas who are in jail. That doesn't seem like the recipe for an encounter with God. And then Jesus, the, the angel of the Lord appears before them and breaks off chains and they're set free. And so what I'm, what I'm trying to say to you is encounters don't always have to look like these pretty moments. <laughs> Actually having an encounter with God could be the very thing you don't want to walk through because the Lord is trying to draw you unto himself. So I just want to read this scripture before we move on to our second point in 2 Corinthians. And it says that you see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. For God said... Uh, For God who said, let there be light in the darkness has made his light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. So I don't know about you, this sounds like an encounter to me. Okay, so we literally have Jesus living inside of us. The, The glory of the Lord is living inside of us. So every day we get the opportunity to have an encounter with the Lord, but it goes on to say this. Now we have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This is what makes clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. So an encounter with God truly is just sharing the death of Jesus. Because of the death of Jesus, we can have an encounter with God. Not because we're so good, because being a fragile clay jar is not a good, pretty, beautiful thing. It's truly so that Jesus, in our weakness, his strength and his glory and his power can come forth out of our, our beings. It's so good. I mean, how many of us, I mean, come on. Everyone loves a good... It's so funny. I, as we were preparing for this, you know, it's uh, me and Anna just compliment. We're so opposite. We are just two opposite people, <laughs> but we compliment each other so well. I always tend to like, I love the good stuff. You know, I love to focus on the good stuff. But man, she, when we were sitting down to write this sermon, she was like, yeah, but the Bible actually says we're going to suffer. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. So I think it's super important because I think I, I'll, I'll say this and I'll move on. I think it's super important for us to realize some of us in this room, you're going through real stuff. You are going through a real season in life. And I just want to encourage you to, to, to look and see, man, because even though it's hard, doesn't mean God is absent. 
God is still in it. And, 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 and not even that, I think there's an anointing in hardship and suffering that we get in those seasons that we can't get in other seasons. You know what I mean? So God is trying to give you, impart in something into you. He's trying to take something out maybe. Maybe there's something in you. There's a flesh thing. Maybe there's a heart issue in this time. And he wants to replace it with himself. And if we're not careful, we'll just try to bypass the suffering, get to the good part. But the Lord is still working in the suffering. Amen? Come on. 